I approach the lock gate with my stern closed to the steps where I want to step off. I have my center line and my windlass ready to grab when I need them. I slow down gently so that the stern does not get pushed away from the steps. In this instance I was actually a bit faster than I would have liked due to the wind and I had to reverse quite hard to stop. I had to correct it a bit in forward to get close to the steps to be able to step off. So as you can see I don't stop the boat fully but I let it drift just very very slowly so that it goes into the lock all by itself. I walk up the steps with the rope and the windlass and feed the rope over the gate and let the boat drift into the lock. When the boat is in the right position I just stop it with the center line. And when the boat is fully stopped, I put the center line around the bollard twice and lay out the rope towards the upper end of the lock so that I can easily reach the rope when I'm working at the top and also that the rope cannot snag on anything. And closing the gate. I start opening the ground paddle on the side where the boat is on because the flow of the water keeps the boat on the near side. I open the paddle very slowly so that I can always watch the boat and stabilize it if I need to. So when the lock is ready I'll just open the gate and close the paddle as well. I only open the paddle on one side generally so that I can drop the paddle really quickly if something happens. step back onto the boat and I take it out of the lock. And I stop just past the lock gate and step off again with my center line. Now if your center line is long enough you can just keep it in your hand when you close the gate. Otherwise you can just tie it very loosely around a bollard. The boat's not going to go anywhere in those few seconds. You just need to make sure that the stern is beyond the gate so you can actually close it. And off I go. Coming into the lock as you're going down is really easy, of course, as you can just step off with your windlass and your center line on the side. You just need to make sure that the boat is stopped in front of the sill marker, which is painted on the side of the lock. This boat is 60 foot long and I aim to be about 2 meters in front of the sill marker when the boat is stopped.
As before, I wrap the line around the bollard twice and lay the line out towards the bottom of the lock this time so that I can easily reach it. And closing the gate. When going down, I generally open the paddle fully straight away because uh, the, the water going out doesn't create as much turbulence in the lock as when you're going up. The only thing I watch out for is the boat being pulled forward a bit when the water is going out, but that can be controlled with the rope. If the lock is not too deep, I also open both paddles when going down. When the lock is ready, I close the paddle on the far side first, walk back and open the gate on the near side where the boat is, and then close the paddle. Then I start pulling the boat out of the lock. Now the trick here is that I need to give the boat just enough momentum to drift past the bottom gates, but also be really, really slow at that point. Now as the boat drifts past me, I start coiling the rope in my hand so that it doesn't snag on anything. I feed the rope over the gate again and let the boat drift. Now in this instance you can see that I didn't give it quite enough momentum, so I had to pull a little bit more at that point. I watch as the stern exits the lock and then close the gate behind as soon as possible. You can see how I'm holding the coiled rope in my left hand in this instance. And as the boat drifts past, I can drop one coil after the other to keep it really neat. Once the gate is fully closed, I gather up the rope again and start walking down the steps. In this instance, I've timed it quite well, so the stern arrives at the bottom of the steps just as I come down. And off I go.